Every military group in the world today is riddled with members of the dark forces pledged to serve the cause of ignorance, savagery, war, and confusion. Originally, churchianity was the center for dark force activity, and later the political and economic arenas served as a focus for evil. These three centers still serve, and another is coming up to a strong second lead right behind the military, and that is the whole field of medicine and associated interests such as pharmaceuticals. The military is still in the lead because since the invention of the printing press, the more astute black disciples have concentrated on building a global propaganda machine. They have need of strong military backing to keep the machine running and to keep the unfree press under strict control and censorship. The dark forces work only by inspiring fear. In the final analysis, fear is their only weapon. Of necessity, they must always work secretly, or at least they must think they are harboring secrets. Actually, however, the hierarchy has complete and instantaneous accounts of their ever activity, and even of their every thought and plan. But even those who serve the cause of evil, degraded as they are, still have free wills which must be respected. They are still children of God, even though benighted children. When Van Tassel visited the cavern in the far north, he found that secrecy shrouded every movement in the area, or so these deluded people thought. It is high time that every individual who has reached the age of reason and is of sound mind should learn to, to think correctly about that which is not directly in front of his nose. Tesla would never have been able to invent alternating current had he not been able to work in the fourth ether. There is nothing mystical about working with gas which may be invisible to the average human eye. Therefore, why should anyone hesitate to work with physical matter which is one grade finer than gas? And why should anyone be considered lunatic who can project his consciousness into areas where he cannot conveniently take his physical body? The guards in the cavern, according to Van Tassel, were psychically aware of his presence in that they sensed something unusual. They were extremely tense and suspicious. He said the people working in the cavern had the finest equipment, including the latest electronic and magnetic devices. The cavern was well lighted, heated, and ventilated. All machine parts were covered, up, covered so that no person could see any assembly except the one he was working on. In one super-secret area, Van Tassel came across what appeared to be a flying saucer under construction. It stood on a large base, and across the base were stenciled words, Tesla Spear, P.A. On that October night in 1956, when the Van Tassels visited us, very little was known about any of us, by any of us about Tesla's current activities. Therefore, after the last guest had gone, the conversation turned to Tesla and the fascinating trip which Van Tassel had made to the Northern Air Force Base was discussed in detail. Van Tassel was of the opinion that perhaps Tesla did, Tesla did not die. He also thought that the Tesla Spear was a flying saucer. It was out of this early morning conversation that this book began to take shape. A magnetic focus had been formed and suddenly a flood of information on Tesla came pouring in, much of it from strange and unexpected sources. Over in Paris, a spacecraft convention was held for interested Europeans. Author H. Matthews of Canada submitted a paper on the Tesla set for interplanetary communication, which he had built and operated since 1947. A report on this paper reached New York, and a contact between Mr. Matthews and the present author was established by correspondence. Mr. Matthews frequently contacts spaceships on the Tesla set and has had numerous personal conversations with the crews as well. His property in the province of Quebec is quite secluded and the spaceships can easily land at night without being observed by the merely curious. Over the years since he first built the Tesla set and since the space people first came to visit him, he has cleared up many points about Tesla, such as those discussed by Van Tassel. 
Mr. Matthews had never been uncertain about the death of Tesla, although many persons are of the opinion that he did not die. Probably this doubt is st stimulated by the fact that both Tesla and the White Dove have continued their work in Shambhala, Shambhala in their subtle bodies, and many people intuitively feel that they are still here. Apparently, the White Dove does manifest from time to time. Recent, recently, there was an interesting experience reported where two white doves, not pigeons, flew into a tree and perched there for a brief period where they were observed by persons who had just completed some work on a Tesla project. This happened in an area where doves had not been seen for more than a quarter of a century. If Tesla cares to use the methods followed, followed by adepts who are members of the spiritual hierarchy of this planet, he could lower his vibrations if necessary, and his body would appear to be physical. The masters use this method, as do adepts among space people. By lowering his vibrations, he could emerge in normal physical plane activity, but since he has trained disciples in embodiment, it is not likely that he would find it necessary to perform physical plane work. Another reason why many people think that Tesla is still alive and active in a physical body is because of a, an unexplained incident which happened at his funeral, an incident which was extremely puzzling to the press. The funeral service was held at St. John the Divine Cathedral in New York, and a special Yugoslav honor guard, resplendent in their uniforms, stood around the casket, which was draped with the American flag. Many reporters and press photographers were present and during the service made a large number of pictures. However, not a single negative turned out successfully. The cameras were focused on the ca casket, of course, and this entire area on each picture was blurred with what appeared to be currents of oscillating energy. Around the edges of each picture, the background of the cathedral itself was clear and in perfect focus but not a single picture was obtained of the casket, the honor guard, nor even of the people who sat in the pews near the casket. After the service, the body was cremated. There, there was a rumor that the body in the casket was not that of Tesla, for that the body of Tesla had been resuscitated and possibly removed from the casket before the funeral. But there is a more likely explanation there have been cases where bodies of advanced disciples have been removed from the casket, casket with angelic assistance after the casket was closed, but this was done in order to prevent the body from being buried. Since Tesla's body was cremated, this precaution against the barbarous practice of burial was unnecessary. More, Tesla's body had been used for a long time and was quite worn, so it is not likely that resuscitation would have been considered. It would be far easier to simply get a new body for him if he needs one. The probable explanation is in line with a new age practice now being used by disciples who are ready to make their ascension, but who are tied to families and social groups whose members are less advanced in evolution and unable to understand the ascension process. If one individual in an average orthodox family is ready for his ascension, he cannot under ordinary circumstances raise the vibratory action of his body and disappear. The shock would be too great for those left behind, and besides a disappearance of this sort would result in police action and a search for the missing person. Consequently, the individual follows custom and sheds his physical body. Then he remains with the body for a few hours, and with angelic assistance he withdraws every electron, leaving only an empty atomic shell. All the electrons are then recharged and returned to universal supply to be used over again. There have been many instances of this type of withdrawal in recent years, since so many disciples are completing their earth experience and leaving this planetary classroom. In these cases, the body structure that remains after the withdrawal of the electrons is a source of puzzlement to undertakers. They cannot understand what has taken place, although they quickly realize something unusual has happened. 